Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J. Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Let's go ahead and hop into these astrological transits for today so we can see how you can be better prepared to navigate these celestial energies. Um, I made a boo-boo. Like, I don't know how I pulled this off. I said that the moon was entering into Leo today, and that's just not the case. The moon is entering into Leo tomorrow. And I don't know why I put moon enters Leo on Tuesday. I, I really don't know. But, uh, yeah, anyways, the moon enters into Leo tomorrow. The moon's going to spend the entire day in Cancer today. So today will be what I will call a building energy kind of day. And then, of course, tomorrow we're going to have the moon entering into Leo and the Venus conjunct Mars. So, um, yeah. So, I missed that one somehow. Um, let's go ahead and actually bring up the chart itself. Um, and if I seem a little bit, like, and I can't stop smiling because I think it's just kind of crazy. I just spent, like... I know this is like a tangent that I'm doing. I just spent like the last like 10 minutes. Just, I just typed in daily horoscope on YouTube or daily for like daily astrology forecasts on YouTube. And of course, my stuff's not showing up because I have a small ass channel. But what was surprising is that I pretty much came across like the same shit. Like, in like a, like some weird like ai like generated woman talking very generically about daily forecasts for all the 12 signs and literally it was like three separate it's like three different it's like three or four different channels that have one had like 70 something k another one had like a 300 and 300 and like almost 50k subscribers and it's like super generic bullshit astrology and then there was a couple people out there that i noticed like gregory scott i noticed him like he's really good he's based out of the uk um but i don't know if, i think he does like a daily video but i think it's more like tarot but i think he does tarot and astrology um but for some reason, when I typed in daily astrology, like his didn't come up. It was just like a, it was like a week, like a weekly video. And then of course Deborah Silverman, Silverman, she popped up. She's really good, so no issues there. But like some of the other things that I saw just didn't. And then of course she have like all the like the um like the Vedic astrologers, like the Indian astrologers. You see that stuff that pop up. But and I know astrology is kind of being essentially like gaslighted on YouTube, anyways. But no. But like the daily, as far as like a daily astrology forecast, that there's not really anything out there right now. There was, I guess the Leo King was doing it, but he moved everything to his app, which is cool, you know. Um, but, and honestly, he's the one that inspired me to do a daily video. But like, I'm looking at some of these other things and I'm just like, what the hell? Like, I'm watching it. I'm just like, are y'all going to say anything? Or are you just going to say generic bullshit without using any astrology to actually back up what you're saying? And, like, the main ones, like I said, it was, like, daily horoscope, daily something else. It's, like, it's like three different daily horoscope, like, YouTube channels. And they all have, like, the same fucking voice, maybe slightly altered. And it's all generic, basic bullshit. And void of personality, void of anything. And I'm just like, wait, this is what has, like, this is what's getting the views and shit. And I'm just like, bro, like, where is the real substance, man? And I'm just like, I'm just, I'm going to keep doing this. But, like, that's insane to me. And I'm just, I'm watching, and I'm like, this, and... Even some of the comments of some of the videos were like, yeah, this is crap. Or like the video, or like there was like not that many comments on most of them had like hardly any comments. You would think that with a channel that has 200 and 
300,000 plus views that there'll be more comments unless YouTube is straight deleting them and shit. But even so, like I watched just a few minutes of my Scorpio horoscope and I'm like, this is very slapsticky, surface level magazine, fucking cosmo cosmopolitan astrology. Like, this is very like, this is that shitty astrology that you fucking would read in the newspaper in the fucking 90s. Like, this is not real astrology. And, like, I know I'm going on, like, a pretty big aside here. And maybe maybe that's part of what this video is. Like, it's just because, like I said, there's not really a whole lot happening in astrology today. I'm going to bring up the chart here in a bit for you guys. I just, you know, you got to do some, you, gotta do, you have to do your own research, man. If I'm doing a daily astrology horoscope, I want to type in daily astrology horoscope on YouTube and see what comes up. And, after seeing what comes like seeing what comes up, I'm just like, I know that what I provide is leagues above what is out there right now. Like I know that, you know, there are some astrologers I'm sure that are doing a daily horoscope, and I can't see them because YouTube's not showing it and stuff. Why are we getting blocked? I don't know, but you're already starting to see a lot of people jump off astrology right now because they don't know what actual astrology is. It's like things are getting very heated in the kitchen. And when things get heated in the kitchen, a lot of times people have a tendency to flee. So, but it's kind of insane to me to, to see that. And very, like, like I'm disappointed. Like, but, you know, I'm not going to stop. Because I'm watching those and I'm like, there's no way. That, that is the reason why people don't believe in astrology. It's saying bullshit like that out there. Where, yeah, real astrologers out here, such as myself, that are doing the work, that look at charts every single fucking day and will provide, you know, just my observations on what I see and give you guys the interpretations and stuff like that and let you guys know, hey, this is what's coming up. And, and the thing is, too, is that a lot, most of this is shit. Most of this is channeled. It's not like... I'm not just telling you guys sweet nothings. I'm, I'm giving you guys the real raw deal. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to see out there this basic ass shit, that is frustrating as hell. I can see why the Leo King moved all this stuff off of YouTube. Just straight the fuck up. I can see why he did. Because you have things like that out there. And not only that, but a lot of people just don't really appreciate the free stuff. This is a free horoscope, essentially, you know, and I'm going to continue to do it because I'd rather do readings or teachings and stuff like that, you know, for paid. But that's just that was just insane. Just looking at that, I was like, wow, this is what this is my competition, if you will. Like, that's just mm -mm, mm -mm. now forgive me for my eight minute fucking intro because <laughs> this this right here, this is astrology, okay? This not showing basic ass images flashing across a, a screen about your fucking finances and your love life and your job and your whatever, you know? No, this like pulling up fucking charts, seeing the planets, seeing the symbols, talking about the actual aspects. This is astrology. Right? This is astrology. I can talk about love and compatibility and finances all day in the world, but you could talk about that, but people still won't know what the hell. They don't know the houses. They don't know what planets are causing it. They don't understand any of that stuff. And I'm like, I feel, and I'm, I know that this is the big hurdle that we have as astrologers, like real astrologers, you know, to hurdle that kind of shit. The whole that kind of understanding because a lot of people just don't simply don't get it, right? So, um, but yeah, we have the moon here that's going to be, you know, on its last full day in uh, Cancer. You know, it's home sign, and like I said, there's not really a ton that's happening today. It will sextile Uranus, you know, here at 19 degrees. So there's going there you go. There's like a nice little opportunity that opens up. Like I said, I call sextiles. The, um, the aspect of opportunity. So opportunity doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to take the opportunity as well. Now, what's interesting about this, of course, is that the moon likes to be in Cancer and it likes to be in Taurus. Uranus falls in Taurus. So there's not really mutual reception here. 
Um, I think really the opportunity here is to really, you know, tap into our sense of value with that Uranian energy, but we realize that it is going to come through an innovative kind of quality. You know, not everyone's going to per se get it. And maybe that's just some, you know, my whole earlier tangent, you know, about the state of a daily horoscope on YouTube and what's out there, you know, unless a lot of it's being blocked. I mean, there's millions of people that make YouTube videos. So I'm sure I'm not the only dude out there making a daily astrology forecast, but to see what comes up when you just type in that it's kind of insane, right? So you got, and you got, that, you got that Uranus is the internet as well, right? And we can see, you know, what value is out there, but you, you have to be able, it's about being able to really see through the delusions and the deceptions and stuff like that too. You know, this moon is going to also try Neptune today and said positive aspect, but we got to remember out of all of the signs, Neptune is probably still one of the strongest because it's the only it's the only um, planet that's in its home. It's the only planet that's in its home spot, right? Besides the moon. So you're going to have two planets, you're going to have two, uh, two planets that are in their home spot. So these moons that have been, have been in Cancer that have been training these Neptunes and Pisces, they've been some of the strongest aspects that we've had for the last little bit here because they're both in their home spot. Now, of course, the moon moves super fast and Neptune moves super slow. But, you know, that's the thing about this. You know, well, that's going to be a harmonious aspect. So we've been having harmonious aspects on how to direct our emotions via the moon here in Cancer and how to harmonize them with the dream with the Neptune and Pisces. But we gotta remember Neptune is Neptune is a very auspicious planet, right? Even even in a positive way, even aspect of positively, Neptune can sometimes be a bit standoffish. It's, it's it, Neptune's weird because Neptune is literally in his own world all the time, 24-7. And like I said, I call Neptune Beerus from my Dragon Ball Z, right? So he has the capability of being nice. But he also has the capability of destroying your ass and takes pleasure in doing, he can take pleasure in doing so, but also is a bit quirky and also loves food and really appreciates his sleep, you know? So that's the interesting thing about Neptune too, is that like, it's one of those planets and you could argue that Neptune is a bit, is almost harsher than Saturn. Saturn gets the rap, of course, of being harsh. And Saturn's hard. Saturn's a hard motherfucker. Don't get twisted. But Neptune can almost be a bit harder than Saturn. Mainly because Neptune, if you think about even just lore-wise, being the brother of Zeus, right? Zeus, Jupiter, like this. There's a jealousy there. You know what I'm saying? Zeus, God... He got the looks. He gets all the women, even though he forces himself on a lot of women and shit like that. And, you know, king of the gods, Neptune, who has an incredible amount of power, mind you, is kind of many times an afterthought. And there could be some jealousy there. You know, so people don't, people forget about how jealous, you know, Pisces can get. People forget about that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if you think about it, too, like, the eighth house to Pisces is Libra, right? Pisces definitely gets jealous in relationships or over relationships. Why? Because Pisces will constantly fantasize about being with somebody, but then won't ever approach them. But then if that person gets into a relationship, they get super jealous or Pisces will literally get mad at themselves for having multiple crushes. Like, Pisces will have a crush on someone, right? Pisces will have a crush on someone, and then someone else will come and kind of pique their fancy, and then they almost get mad at themselves because they feel like they're cheating on their first crush. But you got to understand about Pisces because it's all in their fantasy and dream world. That's, like, real for them. So for Pisces to, like, cheat on their crush – 
if you will, that's like a real phenomenon for them. That's like a real thing. I kind of got that a little bit growing up because I'm a Pisces moon, but that's like a real thing. You know, just giving out just some like little insights into the Pisces energy, right? So that's the thing about this too. Um, you know, like I said, we're going to see this moon kind of make these aspects throughout the day. It's going to, like I said, it's going to try Neptune. It is going to make a quincunx over to Mercury as well, but that's like right at the, that's pretty much at the end of the day, actually, when, the, when it does that. It's really coming into Wednesday when the moon even makes those aspects. And then, of course, that moon's going to oppose Pluto tomorrow as well. So, yeah, today's the day where, like I said, there's not really much happening. It's more building energy. We still have the Chiron North Node conjunction that's still coming. To, it's still there. I mean, yeah, it's starting to separate very, very slowly, but we're still going to feel that energy. We're still feeling this energy quite a bit. And then, of course, we have the Mars-Venus conjunction, which is going to come to its apex on Wednesday. So we do have we have one conjunction that is closing in, and then we have one conjunction that is starting to separate, right? We also, of course, have the Sun-Saturn conjunction, which is coming, which is going to be major. And, of course, Mercury will be joining up with this conjunction. So, like I said, we are building up to, you know, this, this last week of February, which is going to be a bang. I'm telling you, the mercury sun Saturn Kazemi that's going to be happening in Pisces at nine degrees is going to be one of the most powerful transits we will experience this entire year. Sun Sun conjunct Saturn is already powerful. To have Mercury involved at the same time is also powerful. And then of course Neptune is here in Pisces as well. You gotta remember the last time that the Sun and Saturn conjuncted in Pisces, Neptune was not there, okay? Neptune wasn't there. This was back in, what, 94, right? It was the last time that this even happened, or maybe a little bit earlier, actually, probably like 95, 96, or something like that. But Saturn, uh, excuse me, Neptune was back in Cap, right? So the last time, I mean, now, the last time that this could have happened, right, you have to go back, like, I think it's, like, 1848 is when I saw that the last time that this could have happened. Now, mind you, I think Pluto at that point was in Aries, too. So, you know, that's a whole that's a whole other thing, too. And, in fact, I'll just, just for shits and giggles, we might as well just go back, 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 back. Back, back, back in time. Du, 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 du. See, this is real astrology. Me showing you these sort of things, right? This is real astrology. And that bullshit that you saw on there. All right, boom. So we go, yeah, see, because they're all like right here. So go forward a year, go forward a year. So yeah. All right, yeah. So the sun and Saturn would have conjuncted in Pisces. While Neptune was also in Pisces, but Neptune was at zero degrees of Pisces, not 26 where it is right now. Okay, so that's that's the major difference point right there. And like I said, yeah, Pluto was in Aries as well. So, you know, that was the last time that we could have saw Sun conjunct Saturn, and even Mercury was there too. That's the crazy thing about it. Even Mercury was there. Now, granted. Actually, I think Mercury moved into Aries by the time that this conjunction technically. Oh no, it, it retrograded. I forgot. Yeah, because I was looking at this stuff last night. But yeah, we actually had a new moon on Saturn with Neptune in Pisces back in 1848. That's right. I remember I was looking at this last night and I was kind of like flabbergasted. I was like, oh wow, shit. Look at that. So Mercury was involved in this uh, conjunction, although it's obviously like very separated so it's not exact but that was the last time that we really could have seen you know sun conjunct saturn in pisces well while, while neptune was also in its home but remember like, neptune is here at zero degrees so it's a little bit different interesting though that mercury retrograding at 27 degrees is retrograding on the spot where neptune currently is so 
yet. So yeah, we are, like I said, building up to something that we have not experienced since 1848, right? So that's why I'm saying like, because this is functionally novel for everyone alive, this is functionally new for everyone alive right now. We are really moving into a new era. We are moving into a world that is not going to look the same as it did before. This is the beginning of the world that you knew forever. So no pressure. <laughs> and realize that we're all going through this together. So let's go ahead and hop into the cards. Forgive me if I seemed frustrated at the beginning of this, but I just have to bring my authentic experience to the forefront because, like I said, I'm not going to stop with the daily astrology forecast. There have been times where I've wanted to. Trust me, there have been times where I wanted to just not do a daily forecast and try and figure out some other content to put out, maybe like a weekly or something like that, or to revamp the way that I do the video and stuff. But, you know, the obviously there are people out there, you know, that watch these videos and the subscribers that I do have and stuff, the people that do watch and you guys, I definitely appreciate you guys know that I'm the real deal. You guys know that there's bullshit out there and you guys choose to watch me. So for that, I'm super grateful and I'm super thankful for your viewership. Um, but, you know, seeing back out there, seeing the other bullshit that's out there and I will call it out for what it is. It's bullshit because that's the stuff that's not guiding people. It's just, it's just saying the same basic shit that we've heard from astrologers from the last 30, 30 to 40 years of the same, oh, today you're going to, you know, Bob, Bob, you have an opportunity to increase your wealth by two times or, oh, today you may meet someone that is going to, like, oh, what's it based in? Is like Venus crossing over a planet? Like, is something moving into the seventh house of Scorpio for Scorpios? Is there, some, like, what's going on? Is Jupiter on Venus that day? Like, what's going on? Like, give me the actual backing to the slapstick Cosmo cosmopolitan fucking magazine bullshit astrology that you are spouting to me. Give me the actual deets, not this basic ass shit. Okay. With the fucking thumbnails that have emojis they're doing and like fucking headlines that are like Scorpio you won't believe what's gonna happen today or like they shouldn't have done that to you like I I'm sorry like I know there are some I know there's some people and I know there's a lot, a lot of tarot readers that would do that like if they'll do like their monthlies or weeklies and they'll be like Pisces something great's gonna happen to you this month like and a lot and some of those people they're good they're like legit they're good at what they do I understand that titles can grab people and other sort of other things like that. I understand that's probably marketing, and maybe I'm just a salty bitch. Maybe I'm just a salty ass Scorpio, right? But like, that's just for me. It's I rather the I rather the message do the talking. You know, what I'm saying I, I I don't necessarily need to put some sensationalized fucking headline and emojis in my fucking thumbnails to convey my message. My message is this what i'm delivering to you and the expressions that i have and showing you the charts and explaining what's going on and doing just what i just did and going back in time to show you a transit that we are about to experience that we haven't experienced since 1848 that is a real that is real astrology okay now i have the four of swords so maybe i need to calm my ass down Maybe I need to calm my ass down, you know. Maybe I need to rest. I do. I did just get. I did get diagnosed with the flu yesterday, although I felt better today and yesterday than I had previously because I started getting. I started experiencing my symptoms last Tuesday, 
you know, so I've, I've been dealing with this for a while, you know, so because the energy is pretty chill today overall, yeah, we do have Mars and Venus coming together, so there's still some intensity there, but as far as like an exact aspect, not really a whole lot's going on besides some make some aspects. So, just, so it's it's kind of an interesting day. Like it can appear to be chill, but we can definitely feel some tension still kind of rising and stuff too. You know, I'm gonna get another card here. I have the two of pentacles. So maybe what we're chilling on is trying to figure out the whole thing and trying to take the entire journey. Two of pentacles simply it talks about just taking one step in front of the other, one step in front of the other, and not feeling like you need to run the entire marathon today. So I think that's really what it comes down to is that like some people may feel because they feel that pressure mounting because they feel Mars and Venus coming together in Aquarius and Aquarius is a very solution oriented sign. It wants to have answers or definitely provide the answers. And then of course we have the Chiron North node conjunction, which is still going to be happening for the next, you know, I would say like five to six days or so. You know, while they're at the same degree here, you know, there's definitely some pressure to try and like hustle, get things done to make some sort of change so we can feel better, so we can feel like we're actually are accomplishing something and moving forward. But are you going to listen to your ego's understanding of all this? Are you going to listen to your ego's idea of success? You know, the ego here. The ego doesn't necessarily have to be a, like a bad thing, right? The ego is just simply trying to protect you in a sense. But, you know, you don't have to feel the need to run the entire fucking marathon today. In fact, it's okay just to take the one step from the other. Maybe do one extra thing today, but it doesn't have to. But that extra thing doesn't have to be a huge, massive thing, right? It doesn't have to be, you know... You don't have, like I said, you don't have to run a marathon today, right? So, the card I have for today, I have Lilac. Strengthen your faith. I feel like my guys are just talking directly to you. It's like, yeah, I'm going to strengthen your faith, you know? We, it's easy to kind of look out there and we can, it's so easy for any one of us to look out there and to point out the deficiencies in our life, the deficiencies in other people, the deficiencies in society, the deficiencies of this whole fucking mess. It's easy for us to do that shit. But we had to be able to look out at the world around us and look, of course, within ourselves and in our inner world and see all the beautiful things that are working, all the beautiful things that are popping up right now, all the beautiful opportunities that are here right now in every single moment, just simply the understanding and the understanding and just knowing that we, at any given moment, not only are we connected to God, but we can connect and talk to God and, you know, strengthen our faith and realize that we are 100% capable of doing anything that we put our heart and mind to. And yeah, that sounds cute. That sounds fantastical. That sounds, you know, like the nice inspiration, motivational stuff like that. But it is true. But it does require us to, you know, yeah, like I said, strengthen our faith. You know, we have to be being able to see even though it's not readily in front of our face. You know, we have to be able to strength, like walk in faith. It's one of my favorite. I listen to all kinds of music. I also, growing up, I used to listen to a lot of Christian rock music, and I still do on occasion. One of my favorite songs is Walk by Faith by Jeremy Camp. I love that song so much. And, yeah, it's like we may not be able to see where we're going. we got to just take one step in front of the other. We may not be able to see the top of the staircase, but we have to just keep moving. So long as we remain integral to what is true to us in our hearts, and in, remain in spiritual integrity, nothing, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So long as you remember that and you hold that spiritual integrity within your hearts. That is going to do it for your astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. This true, authentic, raw, 
real astrology and not the bullshit astrology that is out there. So I appreciate you guys watching me and joining me in this forecast. I hope that this message assists you on your journey today. And if you'd like to have a personal reading with me, beloved, you could follow, follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Tuesday. I will see you all on the next Astrology Forecast. Peace.